haven't graded them yet. I'm working on it. Okay, so we're starting in, getting into the next section. And the real power, uh, I think, of any science class is not is to understand what's going on around you, but yeah, but what's more, what's more applicable, it's to make our life nice and comfortable. And the only way to do that is to be able to predict things pretty darn well. And that's kind of what we're after, I mean, in, in a general sense. If you're going to make a chemical product, right, and you want it to work, you want to make money on it, so it's got to be effective. It can't make people sick, give them a gut ache. It's got to do the job it was intended to do. It could, whether it's tasting good or being a bowel movement or electrosol, right? You start out with these active ingredients, and it may be a complicated process in the gut or metabolism or even interaction in the brain. You want to be able to, right, what's the end product? How much am I going to get? Or how long is it going to take to get there? There's, there's a lot of complicating matters in there, so we're just getting started on it. And that's kind of where we're at, you know, given the, um, given the reactants, how much product are, are we going to get? So I think we should just, uh, bless you, jump right into this, okay? All right. So let's start with uh, how would you actually just read that chemical reaction? We should probably go back even a little bit further, start at the very beginning. Let's pick on, I'll just pick on Christian. Christian, where are the reactants, where are the products? Um, the reactants are to the left side of the product. Yeah. Do you hear them? Reactants, starting out with products on the left. Okay. So how do you read the above reaction? The, the technical jargon way. Oh, Glory, Glory Anders has a volleyball game or something, right? So let's pick on Erica. Is it Erica? Where's Erica? Erica? No? There's Erica. I'm wrong row. Erica. Erica. How would you read the above chemical equation? Usually, no, like, let, me, let me tell you how I usually do it, right? 2 and 2O5 give, no. What should we say? 2 what? Yeah, yeah, she's, you're technically right. 2 dinitrogen pentoxides, but 2 molecules of them? 2 grams of them? See what I'm driving at? 2 what? It's moles. Now it's not grams because everything weighs, all right? Not everything weighs differently. So there's two ways you can get by with this. You can say two is dinitrogen pentoxide a molecule or a formula unit. Which one is it? Hint: dinitrogen pentoxide. It's a It's a, it's a molecule, right? Because the formula, the technology, the terminology went this way. If you saw a metal, you had to name the cation and the anion, right? And then you're supposed to refer to it as a formula unit because it doesn't exist as a molecule. It's a crystal, right? But there's no metal, so we use the dinitrogen pentoxide naming configuration, right? Rules. So it has to be a molecule. So the, the right way to name, and they're all molecules, actually. You look at them all. So you can say two molecules of dinitrogen pentoxide. I don't know. You could say they produce, or they collide, or they react, or something, right? Probably just produce. It's the easiest thing. Four molecules of nitrogen dioxide and a molecule of oxygen. But that's going to take, it's not going to be very helpful with the homework. It's going to be, much more helpful to do what I think Yesenia said, that moles, two moles of dinitrogen pentoxide. That's, how we, that's the answer to A. Two moles of dinitrogen pentoxide produce four moles of nitrogen dioxide and one mole of oxygen. That's the way we want to do it. Okay. So then we get into this mole bridge idea or ratio that can be obtained from this equation. 
Remember, I was harping before that we're, this, this course is pretty much converting one set of units to another set of units using all these conversion factors. Well, we're not calling them conversion factors. We're calling them mole bridges, but I think it's a little more descriptive, a mole bridge. What ratios could you get from there, right? Janet, what would be a ratio that you could get from that? Now, remember, we read them as moles. That's a hint. But you could say what for what? There's so much of this for every so much of that. Anyone see what I'm driving at? Is it two to four to one? Yeah, okay, two to four to one. All right, but we need to put more units in there. David's on track, right? Two, he said two. So two what? Moles of and 205 and it's I mean there's nothing really wrong with just writing the two but it's not gonna guide you to solve these problems you have to write all these units now you said two to four to one we're only gonna do one ratio two moles of N205 to pick something four moles of NO2 there's no wrong answer we're just right what would be another one Maria, what would be another one? Okay, do the oxygen one. How many moles of it? There's one. So you'd say one mole of O2. What would you want to put on the bottom? Yeah, you can do anything. You just have to make sure that if this is N205, that's a 2. That's all you got to make sure of. We could flip them. See, there's a gazillion of these things, right? Two moles of N205 all over one mole of O2. Do you see the game that's coming up? You would use this one when you want to convert from what moles to what moles. Lauren, you would use that one you want to convert from what moles to what moles. Does anyone see? What's going to cancel? The O2s are going to cancel. So you, so when you know O2 and you want to convert to N2O5, right? That's when you're going to use. That's when you're going to use this one. Okay. So we're not going to write out all these ratios. You just pick the one you need, and we're going to play the same game. Ah, oh, moles of O2 cancel, right? Okay. So let's play the game here. Now, some of these you can do in your head, but let's write it all out. If four moles of N2O5 dinitrogen pentoxide react, how many moles of NO2 are formed? Oh, Adelpho, what do you think? Four moles of N2O5. First, let's just do it in our head. See if I can guide you there. NO2. So here's the N2O5, Adelpho. And where's the NO2? Right there. If they would have said two moles of N2O5 react, would have been the an would have been the answer. Four. But they said, Adolfo, they said four moles of N2O5 react, so the answer is gonna be eight. Right? So that's how you do it in your head. Right? If this just multiply through by two, the answer would have been eight. But you know, the questions are gonna be <laughs> there's no job security in something that's straightforward. So we have to they're gonna be much more complicated. So let's see how you'd actually do it on paper. Four moles, N2O5, dinitrogen pentoxide. Do that box thing, because it's really clear what's on top, what's on bottom. Do you remember, uh, Brianna, what has to go on the bottom? What units? The same unit. All right, what would you put up on top, Gloria Morales? What would you put up on top? What you're trying to find, and that's the NO2. So what's the ratio there, Gloria? What to what? Four to four to two. two. Yeah, you just look copy it right from here. Four to two. Right? 
So then we get the same answer that we would have got, right? Get eight. Because these guys canceled. Three moles of dinitrogen pentoxide react. Now they're after grams of NO2. A little more complicated. Three moles of dinitrogen pentoxide react. Okay. So, Christina, I'll get you started. Well, no, I won't. Starting's the hardest part. Where would you start? Because I think that's the confusing part. Right? Once you get started, you just, oh, then it's a canceling unit game. Exactly. Yeah, you start with the measurement. Okay, uh, David, then what'd you do? We want to end up in grams of NO2 when this is all done. What'd you do? What mole bridge would you use? Trying to find NO2. Yeah, the f NO2's got to be up on top, but what units? The mole bridge, these ratios are always in. Right. He's right, the NO2's got to be up on top, but it's got to be moles. And how many of them? Everybody. Four. Ah. Get bigger here. Four moles, NO2. Right. And then um, on the bottom, uh, Jessica, what would you put on the bottom? Yeah, two of those moles in dinitrogen pentoxide. They're gone, but we're not quite there yet. All right, uh, Marco. You want it up in grams. Perfect. If you're not sure where to go, throw this down there first. It gives you a big hint. And then what? Yeah, the grams of the NO2. And what is that? Everybody, that's called what? The molar mass. Moles to grams or grams to moles, it's always molar mass. So I need a nitrogen, which I think is 14, and 32 for two oxygens, that's... Let's say 14, 30, 46, right? 14 for the nitrogen, 16 and 16 for the oxygen. All right, let's have on top multiply, bottom divide. So take the three times the four, divide it by the two times the 46. About 276 is what I get. And if the units work out, it's really hard to screw up. I mean, only if you put the wrong ratio in there somewhere. Okay. Now they've got, make sense? So this is, E is about as, ugly as you can get it. We can get it a little bit uglier, but oh. let's pick on Victoria. Victoria. So we're going to start with this, right? The 2.8 grams of dinitrogen pentoxide. What would you do with it? down what she said. There's really nothing wrong with it, except we're a little early. We're a little early with it. No, we're okay. We're okay, right? Because three times six is two times three. See, she sees what she did. But there's nothing wrong with it, because she knows you're going to need this at some point. All right? It just, she was a little early, you see? What was the logical thing to do first? Logic dictates do what first? Convert to moles, like grams N205. It's no big deal. Oh, I forgot my G. It's 
no big deal. We can put it in. All right. Uh, two nitrogens. What is that? 28 plus 5 times 16. What is that? 108? Did I do that right? 108 grams of N2O5. Notice how she's okay as long as you realize what you did, right? Because you got to get this guy to cancel. He'll only cancel down there. And how many moles of N2O5? What do I put right here? One, right? It's molar mass. Molar mass is always one mole is that many grams. So you got to put a one there. Okay. So now we can go backwards a little bit. Cancel those dinitrogen pentoxides. Okay. And last step. Uh, Desiree, last step. I think that'd be the last step. What would you do? You have to convert to the grams. So what has to go on the bottom? The mole of NO2. The mole of NO2. And we said the grams of NO2 was 46 from the last one. All right. So whatever's on top, multiply. Bottom, divide. David, what's the answer? All right. 2.8. Times 4, divide by 2, divide by 108, times 46. I got about 2.4. Doesn't seem, right? No, 2.4. Notice they didn't say anything about sig figs, so you port three or four digits, you'll be fine. So you see the game plan. The game plan is pretty much using these mole bridges to convert from one compound to the other. That's really all we're, we're starting with. And if you grab the right ratio, you can convert from moles of reactants to grams of products or grams of reactants to grams of other reactants. It really doesn't matter if you pick the right mole bridge. They didn't even specify. But you know, if they do, good question, if they do specify sig figs, pretty much all you do is whatever you started out with, report your answer the same number of sig figs. So in this case, they started out with two sig figs. So report your answer to two sig figs. I don't know if the homework says it or not. I don't remember. But if they do want sig figs, just report your answer to whatever sig figs you started out with. Jessica. Yeah. Yeah, we just did this one too early. But it's okay. The reason why I didn't erase it and the reason why I didn't say, oh, Victoria, I'd slap her on the wrist is because she knew she was after NO2. And she knew this whole, we're after these mole bridges. So this is right. It's just, remember, it doesn't matter. Multiply everything on top, divide everything on the bottom. Order doesn't matter. So. In fact, you could have even started out exactly with this one. Because you know you need grams of NO2, so right away you start with the mole bridge. That would have worked too. There's no real, real right or wrong way. It's just, I like doing it logical way. Logical, you start with the measurements, so it typically, then you approach the same problem the exact same way every single time. It seems to stick in my brain better. Because there's so many permutations, so many different ways to solve the same problem. So if you s just stick to one way, it, sticks in my brain better. Okay. So we've got a bunch of these. And I wrote, I added a whole bunch of extra ones too. So question to you is, do you want to just keep on doing what we're doing and I'll ask you, or do you want to go to the boards and do this stuff? Is there a preference? I think boards are more fun, don't you? <laughs> I think so. So let, let's do that. So you can bring up just bring your calculator.
bring your, your outline, because then you don't have to be reading this. Spread out as much as you can. And if you need a bigger piece of chalk, it's probably not a bad idea. Spread out as much as you can. You can, Victoria, don't forget. You. And you'd have your own one on board. Okay, we're spread out pretty good. Ashlyn, you guys can head in the back. There's a spot over here. Oh, jump in there. You're good. Okay, so go ahead. There's how many grams of NO2 are required? Mm -hmm to produce seven and a half grams of nitric acid, HNO3. Okay. So you can start out with the mole bridge if you want, but I think it makes the most sense to start out with the measurement. You know you're going to need it. Okay. Okay. Start. I would start with the measurement. Now, now, or you can, or if it makes more sense to you, you can start how Victoria was talking about. She said they want NO2, so you can start with the mole bridge, three moles of NO2, right up on top. But I think it's it makes the most sense for me to start with the measurement. Start with the number, because to me it's, it's faster. But it's already the same. Yes. Okay. So what we want to do is we're going to start with the measurement. Okay. Start with the 7.5 grams of HNO3. Well, it's HNO3, right? And that grams of HNO3 has to go to the bottom, right? That grams of HNO3 has to go on the bottom, those units, GHNO3. So at some point, we're going to have to use that mole bridge of three moles of this and two moles of that. And that's mole bridge. So you have to convert this into moles first. Otherwise, you can't use the mole bridge. So that's what you do, molar mass. An H, and N, and three oxygens. And then that's always, always one mole of whatever it is you added up. HNO3, because that's how molar mass always is. It's one mole of that and add up the grams. And that's an H. So I think, uh, oh, it's mole bridge. It's mole bridge. It's not this. It's not grams. So you got to, this is good, but you got to convert into moles first. So I would convert it into moles first. All right? The grams HNO3 has to go down there. Okay. And then molar mass is always adding them up, and there's one mole of this stuff for that so many you grams. Can't, you can't use this here yet. You can't. Because it's, it's numbers. It's, it's ratios of actual molecules. Not grams. How do you get the mole then? Remember, add an H, an N, and three O's, and that's the grams. Oh, okay. It's molar mass. That molar mass idea. Got it. Okay. And whenever you do molar mass, it's always one mole of them for that. An H, and N, and three O's. I don't know what it adds up to be. So you put two. You have to add up an H, an N, and three O's because that's molar mass. That's the number of grams in a mole of it. Oh, okay, so like. Yeah, it's 1, 1 plus 14 is 15, and 3 times 16, what is it, 61 maybe? Let's look at somebody else's. 60, 63. <laughs> Folks are getting 63 as the molar mass of HNO3, right? So then you keep... No, I, no, I would start here. I would start with the measurement, and then you just keep going. Otherwise, you get way too lost, way too fast. And then... So this isn't even the way to do it, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no. I would start with the measurement and then just keep canceling using... And then right here, then we start adding the formula again, right? That's 
Yeah, then now you're ready for the mole bridge. Realize, Marco, this is the key where a lot of people screw up. They want, like to put a number here, well, but more mass is always one. So you have to figure it out first. You have to figure it out first. Okay, so <laughs> mole HNO3. Okay, good. Uh, where is HNO3? There it is. Or no, there's two of them. It's two of them. And then where do you want to end up in? NO2. NO2. So, so the NO moles of NO2, you bet. Oh, not two. It's going to be three moles of NO2. Yeah, yeah and then, oh, yeah. And so then you got it. The one mole and then the grams of There NO2. you go. Yep. Okay. You just remember, this is a common mistake. People like to put numbers here, but molar mass is always a one, like you have it. It's always a one for molar mass. It's good. Yeah, so 63 grams of HNO3. Grams HNO3 in one mole HNO3. That's that molar mass. It's always that way. It's always adding up the grams. There's always one mole of the stuff. So now you have it in moles HNO3. You're ready to use the mole bridge. There's two of them for every, you want to get it into NO2. So two moles of that for every three moles of this. And then you do this again, but for NO2. Right? Yeah. No. It's good. See what other people got. Did you get about 8.2 as a final answer? Okay. You're good. You're good. So if you got 8.2, the people around you got 8.2, there's nothing to explain to them, just go on and do the next one because you've, uh, you've got the outline. But make sure the folks around you, because you'll get a lot more out of it if you explain it to somebody. It did not work. Okay. Now don't, Lauren, don't, don't get lazy. Right off the bat, it would get, no, it's moles. Right? Otherwise, you don't know what to do next. Two. So this unit has to go on the bottom. And there you go. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this again. Okay. But for NO2. Okay. Because then it'll be in grams of NO2 and we're done. And it's 46. It's 46 total. 46 goes with the grams. Uh, see, that's what I get confused on is like the... Yeah, okay. Flipping. Okay. So you can just remember when you do that molar mass thing, you add up all the that stuff, that's the grams. And it's always one there. Okay. A one of those things and the grams of those things. Yeah, that's yeah. what you add up. So mole Yeah. So the mole always has one on it. And O two. There you go, now you got it. Good. Okay, you're really, really close. Now you these mole, what we're going to do is we're going to do this again, but for NO2. So the next step here, mole NO2 goes on the bottom, the grams of it up on top. Okay. And remember, whenever you do molar mass, the one is always with the, the compound. And then when you add up all that stuff on the periodic table, that's the number of grams. So an, add an N and two O's, it's 46. So the one mole NO2, 46 grams of NO2 up on top. It's 46. 14 plus 32. It should be 46. Okay. Now remember, these are mole ratios. That has to be a mole. And then the mole NO2 goes on the bottom, right, to get it to cancel. And we're just going to do this again. This is, oh, and in molar mass, you add everything up, and then it's always one mole of what you added up. So this is HNO3 up here. That's how it always works. So you add up molar mass, you add up all that stuff, HNO3, there's always one mole of them, and then the grams, the number goes with the grams. So we got HNO3, HNO3, right? And now we're going to, mole NO2 has to be on the bottom, and we're going to do this again, except do it for moles of NO2. Right, so you had an N and two oxygens. That adds up to 46 if you do it. So it's 46. So the 46 goes. What we did again? 46 goes with the grams, right? 
it, it could be top or bottom. It really doesn't matter. But just make sure that there, this is always a one for molar mass. And that's always the stuff you add up. That goes with the gram. It could be top or bottom. It just depends on what you're trying to cancel. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay, I think everyone's got it. Let me flip down to the next one. If you're on, if you're on this one, what's the big deal with excess WO3? If you're on the tungsten problem, why do they? Yeah, what does it even mean? They could have just put a period after here and quit, but they kept going. It just means what? You. It means. So you have 4.81 kilograms of this stuff. It just means that you have more than enough of this. Don't worry about it. There's plenty because you know some has to react. They're just saying there's plenty of it. Don't worry about it. That whole 4.81 kilograms of because that's a lot, right? That whole 4.81 kilograms of hydrogen is going to react because there's so much WO3. Because if there isn't enough WO3, all that 4.81 isn't going to react. See the problem? So that's why they said excess WO3, because there's got to be more than enough of it. So don't worry about it. It doesn't affect the problem at all. So, but that's why it's there. So start with the measurement. Go all the way to grams of tungsten. To write all that. Oh, I do so that I don't have to look down at my book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can just. Good. Keep going. Starting with four point. Now it's H two. Oh. H two. Okay. Right. So grams H two has to go down here. Right. So we're going to get it into moles of H two. Oh, so Use the mole bridge. Right. So you have to get it into moles first. If you're going to use that mole bridge, you got to get things into that into moles. Good. Keep going. Keep going. And it's H2. It's H2. So the yeah, grams H2. So the grams H2 has to go down there. Well, no, just just the unit, gram H2. There you go. So we're going to do that molar mass thing. We're going to do that molar mass thing so that we can get it into moles. And then we can use the mole bridge. That's why you got to get into moles first. No, you can't because you're in Gs. So don't use the mole bridge yet. So it's just... Yeah. And that's a, con Christine, that's a common problem. Folks, they like to put a number up here. But molar mass, it's always one. Good. Christian? Yep. Oh, there's a typo on yours. Yeah, that should be an H2. Sorry. Sorry, that's a typo. It should be an H2. Because look at the reaction. It's H2. That's why so many people have H. It's H2. It's supposed to be a two, a two. Yeah. You guys remember your metric stuff. Okay. So it, the big game plan mm -hmm. is to get it into grams of W. But to get in grams of W, we're going to have to use that mole bridge. Because all we know is kilograms of hydrogen. So we have to get the kilograms of hydrogen into moles of hydrogen so we can use the mole bridge. Does that make sense so far? OK. To get the kilograms of hydrogen and use that mole bridge, you got to get this guy into moles. Well, the only way you can get it into moles is to use 
molar mass. But that's not in kilograms. That's in grams. So get this guy into grams first, then use molar mass. And in a kilogram, there were how many grams? So I'll technically start like kilograms? Yeah, so kilograms has to go down there. How many? Uh, just look at hers. Thousand. <laughs> Thousand. Okay, keep going. You got it. Okay, now you're in grams of hydrogen. You want to end up here, right? So we have to use the mole bridge. Then we got to get in moles. So that's that molar mass thing. So grams hydrogen goes down there. It's that molar mass thing where you add up all. Yeah, where you add them all up. Yep. That's the number of grams of hydrogen in, in how many moles? Exactly. It's always one, one mole of this stuff. Now you keep going. Now you're ready for the mole bridge. Okay, good. good. Keep going. You got it. Now, the reason why you're going to quit if you get lazy and don't write your units. That's mo mo these are mole bridges. You have to write mole W. And that's going to give you a hint. Ah, oh, shoot, I'm still in moles. I got to keep going. So that's moles down there. Then you got to keep going. Yeah, because that's that molar mass thing. And just like with all molar mass, it's always one mole of them for the number of grams. So it's always one mole of them. And you got to add them all up. Well, just one to add up. There's nothing to add. Just W, right? one goes here. Mm -hmm. That's molar mass is always that way. Add everything up on the periodic table to get the number of grams. It's always one mole, of them. just like you did here. One mole of hydrogen. You yeah, added it up to put the grams. So that's all it was. W. Yeah, find W up there. Yep. It should be because you you started out with you started out with like four thousand almost five thousand grams. All right. So you should get a big answer. They don't care. I don't. You just write down the whole number. You could, or just you, or you could write 1.46 times 10 to the whatever it would be, or 1.5 times 10 to the. That's rounding. Don't worry about it. As long as it's close to 1.5 times 10 to the what is it? Five. As long as it's close to that, you'll be good. Okay, we're close. Now we have one more step because so we've got to get it into grams of W. All right? So molar mass of this, molar mass of this. So mole down here, you use periodic table to get the number of grams, and you'll have it. All right? Now you see it? If you quit now, you're in moles. you got to go all the way to grams. So this is going to be that same story as what we did right here, molar mass again. Except you have mole on the bottom, number of grams up on top. And I don't know what it is. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. 183.84. Yep. Grams of the W. And what number do you put right here? It's always one. I'm just trying to trick you up here a little bit. <laughs> That's my job. Molar mass, it's always one mole of the W, whatever it is, the molar mass, it's always one mole of them, and then you add up the grams. Okay. So it's one mole and one mole? Yeah, because it's molar mass. Molar mass is always one mole of the stuff, you add up the grams to get it there. There's nothing to add up though, you just look up W, which is 183.84. Yeah, one mole all over 183.84. grams of W. Yeah. So that's how molar mass always works. It's always one mole of the stuff, and you add up the grams to get that one. And it could be top or bottom, like here it was on the bottom. Mm -hmm. But the key is it's always one mole of the stuff. I just got confused about like, why it was just like one mole of Yeah, well, it, that's, that's a one because of the mole bridge. Yeah. This is a one because it's molar mass. So there's different reasons for it being a one. Oh, up. what did you, yeah, you did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, here are your moles of H2. Mole of H2, yeah, right here's where you messed up. Okay. Because I did this part, the W-O. 
because they don't have to convert to that. You don't need W03, do you? Yeah, that's what you're converting to. No, it's, it's W. Oh, which one are you doing? You're doing the... This one. Yeah, how many grams of W? Oh. <laughs> okay, that's okay. <laughs> so three like moles of H2 okay. and the W. Not this one, it's going to be that, that one. one so one mole of W. Now you got to keep going, though, because now you're in moles of W. So another box. And you want to get to grams of W, so these units have to go down there. Okay, and you got mole of W. Grams, right? that molar mass is always top. grams. Okay. So it's going to be like this, where you did molar mass. One mole of stuff is the number of grams. But the number of grams are going to be up on top this time, because okay. the moles cancel. So a W is 183.84. And the bottom just stays one, right? Yeah. 183.84 grams of W. OK. Now, well, Lauren, what you got to remember, though, is these guys are ones for different reasons. Okay. He's a one because of the mole bridge. Yeah. He's a one because this is molar mass. mass. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So keep going if you if everyone around you got it. How are you guys doing? We're on this one. I'm on this one. You're doing good. All right. Just Christian, just uh, be careful with the units because it's gonna. Oh. You're okay. gonna start feeling comfortable and confident, and, and then you don't write okay. the units, and then you just you make silly mistakes. Yeah. It'll get, it'll get easier. Yeah. It just takes practice. Okay, good, good, good. Making sense? Oh, there's another one. See if you can wrap up this last one here. Know what you know what I saw a student do? Your cell phone. Take a picture of it. Right? And then wherever you're studying, wherever you're at, there it is. Right? At our at our help session, a helpful idea might be what I saw a student doing. If you want to keep track of this big long problem you just did like Christians here, you can just take a picture of it with your cell phone. Right? Then wherever you're at, there it is. Yeah? Quick. You have a couple more minutes. Make sure you're comfortable with this. If you're not sure where to start, man. Let me help you out.
C3H6. Yeah, the propylene is the C3H6. You got it. Yep. So get it into grams first. Well, kg has to go down there because kilograms has to cancel. So in one kg of C3H6, there's a thousand grams of C3H6. Yeah. Now you're ready for molar mass, then the mole bridge. Yeah. And keep good. Keep writing all those units out because they're going to help you. So we're about out of time. My parting suggestion is to keep writing all these units out that you're writing, right? It'll really help you remember what to do next. So have a good weekend.